My name is Julian. I'm coming from Brussels. And I will tell you a little bit of my story, a little bit of a project that I launched some 10 years ago, and a project that's not only involving a lot of DJs, but also a project that forced me to reinvent myself or reinvent the project, redefine what we were doing over and over again. Um, this story started 10 years ago, in, uh, in 2002. I was a student at the university. Uh, I was about to graduate as a civil engineer in computer science. And I never really decided to go into some kind of engineering studies. It was more like the past that people push me into. Uh, my grandfather was a brilliant engineer. My family around me thought, okay, you should follow your grandfather's footsteps and go to an engineering school. Um, but I didn't like it. Uh, the only thing I got there was, I mean, at first was just an accumulation of fear, anger, stress, etc. So much that a couple of days after I graduated, I fell sick. Apparently it was quite bad. I went to a couple of doctors and they gave me the best legal drugs, legal drugs you could dream of, but I knew it would never fully cure me. I knew it would never make me feel good. I knew that I had to learn how to listen to my feelings. I, know, I knew I had to kind of believe in my own dreams, but I was 22 and, and I never asked myself the question, what do I want to become? Because I knew that I would become an engineer, so I never asked myself that question. So I just decided to kind of give my dream, my, my dream a name. That name is laid back. Later on, a friend of mine put a face on this, on this name. And I just decided to develop projects around that name, on, under that brand. Um, and I was starting my, my professional career and, and I worked for a couple of years as, as an engineer in a software company, etc. But I, I kept talking with people around me. What, what can I do? What, uh, and, and some people asked me, yeah, but what did you like to do when you, when you were a child? And I was like, yeah, I, I, I like to read stories. Well, I like stories. I, actually, I like to listen to radio because my mother was listening a lot to the radio and I was spending time with her listening to the radio and actually when we were in the car uh, traveling from one side of Belgium to the other one uh, and when my mother was not playing the, the, the radio, I was playing the radio myself. I was mimicking the, the, the radio host. I was pretending I was a radio guy. So I decided that my first project would be to start a radio. We're chilling, we lay back on 98.8. Hey yo, what's going on, y'all? This is Buckshot from Black Moon holding it down. The lean back show. The lean back right here on FM Rock. Yeah, it's your boy Blue, your girl's favorite color, and we chilling at the lay back show. The lean back. Hold it down, FM Brussels. FM Brussels. So from 2002 until 2010, uh, me and a bunch of people, because actually I never did any project under laid back on my own. There was always a few people around me. Uh, we've been running the laid back radio show on various radio stations uh, in the Brussels area. This picture was taken in, a, in the FM Brussels studio, um, probably one of the biggest local radio stations in, in Brussels. And um, the thing is, uh, I'm not a DJ, I'm not even a radio host, I'm just a radio producer. My role was just to bring people into the studio and to make sure that after one hour, two hours, we had like a really good show to, um, to broadcast. But, and that was really cool when I see such a picture. I mean, it, it, it makes me feel something because we stopped the radio show two years ago and that was great, but that was, that was not good enough we had to redefine, once again, the laid back project because FM radio is cool, but it's, it's just on audio. You don't know who's listening. So after eight years, on a weekly basis, you don't have any holidays. It's every week of the year. 
You do this radio show, you do it for free, you do it for the love, you do it for the people that you bring to the studio, but still, I was getting frustrated, so I decided we will stop it. And I was a guy working with new technologies, and I thought, okay, we can do better if we do it online. And that's what I did. In 2008, I decided to stop my job in the banking sector to fully investigate online uh, the power of online radio. And at that time, there was a Belgian company called Radionomy who just launched their, their service. It's a service allowing everybody to launch uh, um, an online radio station. But then again, I mean, they were an online service, they, they had a website, but they were only offering audio to our listeners. That's, that wasn't enough for, for us. So we decided to build, on top of the Radionomy platform, a player. That's, that's just a prototype, but we thought we could give information about the artists being played, we could give a picture, we could allow people to, to kind of interact in real time with the, with the station. And we put a lot of effort into developing this, this, this project, hoping to sell it to other radio stations or to sell it to the, the, the radio enemy people that they could offer this, the same kind of player um, to the audience. But it didn't work. Uh, nobody seemed to be interested in this player back then in 2009. Um, so a friend of mine who was a, a, a new media consultant told me, okay, maybe you're, you're a bit too much of an engineer. You're building stuff, but you're not explaining what you're doing. So why don't you write the theory behind your player? Because your player is just a prototype, but you might have ideas that are, more wi that are wider than just the tool that you're showcasing. So I spent, once again, a couple of months writing a manifesto about the future of radio. That allowed me to go to a few conferences and to discuss to a few, with a few business people about my ideas. But then again, um, I was, I've not been able to convince anybody. And what I, at that point, that was, a, that was a huge failure. I mean, I spent like eight months, nine months, and I was not only, uh, it was not only myself working on this project. There was a developer, two graphic designers, uh, plus the, the consultant to help me uh, formalize my ideas. And I decided just to stop pushing it. I mean, I decided to just do something else. And in the end, three, four years after, I realized that I got a job thanks, thanks to working in that field. I was, I've been hired by, um, by that consultant company to become also a new media consultant, which is my, my, my day job nowadays. The, the programmer has been hired by the biggest web company in Belgium. The two graphic designers uh, have plenty of contract opportunities now thanks to, to this player. So our initial ID, we were not able to to convince people about it, but still we got something out of it. So I think it's, it's, it's quite important and that's what we keep doing at Laidback uh, on a really constant basis is to start ideas, but to not, not stick to it for too much of a long time. And actually that's where the success story came from. The success story came from Mixcloud, which is a, a startup based here in London, allowing people to share uh, music programs. And we were, at first, we were using Mixcloud as a backup system because the radionomy system was not reliable. The server was breaking down on a constant basis and we, had, we needed a place where we could redirect our audience. So we just picked, laid back, we just picked Mixcloud saying, okay, we're gonna put a few mixes there and just, wow, that's cool. But we ended up being bigger on Mixcloud than we are anywhere else. We have noticed 15,000 followers. And, and last year when Mixcloud made their ranking of the most popular radio stations on their platform, we were number three next to some, I mean, really big guys. We just, I mean, we just laid back from Brussels, like local radio station kind of stuff, me and my friends. I mean, that's, and 15 people, 15,000 people are following us and every time we, we put a mix online, there, there are thousands of, of, of listeners. So that made me feel that I was right. I was right to leave the, 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 um, 
the FM, the local FM radio station where I was, and and to try different ideas. And once again, reaching that point, I was like, okay, it's cool. Now I have a platform. Now I have an audience. Now I have plenty of artists or labels sending me music. That's cool, but. I cannot really relate to that, that story. Okay, I can play the next big hit and, and be the first one to, to, to break it, etc. But going back to what I wanted, I wanted to tell stories. But in order to tell a good story, I need to be involved in that story. So we decided to go into content production. We decided to support people who were creating, be it music or art, and to be next to them. And actually, once again, it started as an accident. One day, a friend of mine published a track on our website. That was, um, if you know, Jay Dilla wrote a track that was that's called Fuck the Police. And in order to do this track, he sampled uh, a Belgian uh, jazz musician called René Costi, wrote a track called Scrabble. And friends of mine just did a cover of this René Costi track, and we put it on the website, offer it as a free download, people started picking it up, and one day I got a comment on the website, somebody telling me, um, yeah, you should release it as a, as a seven inch, and I don't like when people tell me what I should do. So I just check, check who was the guy, and apparently his email address was was jazzysport.com, and I knew Jazzy Sport was a record label based in, in, in Tokyo. And I, I told the guy, yeah, but man, if somebody should release this track, you should do it. You are a label. I'm not a label. And the guy was like, yeah, yeah, but wait, <laughs> cool, let's do that. And, <laughs> and what, what's, what, what, what was really cool is, of course, we are using the power of the power of internet to get in touch with people, to get our message across, etc. But at some point, it's good when it's also as a, an, a consequence in real life. And they decided to release the seven inch. They decided to put one of their in-house uh, producer, Mitsu the Beats, uh, on the flip side with a remix. And one day I got a phone call from Taro, who's the manager from Jazzy Sport. And he told me, listen, uh, yesterday I was in Amsterdam. Tomorrow I'm in Paris. I'm going to stay a couple of hours in Brussels. I want you to meet me because I've got something for you. I never met the guy before except a few emails that we exchanged. So I met him at his hotel. And he just gave me the, the test pressing. For, for this record. So actually, I got to meet somebody I would never meet just thanks to a blog post and answering uh, a comment. Um, as I know, it's quite frustrating to talk about music without listening to it. Let's just have a quick look at the Scrabble track. Um, so after this project, we decided to. I, I certainly don't want to become a record label. I'm, 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 I'm doing my best to not define what is laid back. It's not a radio station. It's not an event organization company. It's, but still, we've been putting out. I think ten releases, vinyl, CDs, or um, or pure digital, and. That one is really a good example of how we do it. Um, my girlfriend and a couple of friends decided to make a surprise for my birthday and they asked one of my favorite artists and friends, uh, friend Oli B, to remix the, uh, the laid back logo. But I was feeling uncomfortable when I received this, this, this gift because I'm not laid back. I mean, laid back is a community. There's, it's a network of, of creative people working together. So who am I? although I created this project to, to receive something like this. So I decided I need to find a way to give this remix back to, to my people. And at the same time, um, 
I was working with an intern. He was uh, studying music management. And he came to me and asked me, as a final assignment for my studies, can I make a laid-back compilation gathering artists from the laid-back network? I was like, yeah, for sure. And he wanted to make a statement and show that it was possible to release music in a different way. So he decided to use a crowdfunding platform. Once, once again, you can see it was not a full success because we were not able to, uh, to gather the, the, the full amount. But that wasn't a problem because the extra $2,000 uh, that we needed was the money for the release party. And a couple of weeks before the release, the guys at Mixcloud, they told us, OK, guys, you are being good partners for us, and you're bringing content and interaction on our platform, so we will offer a release party for you guys. So we ended up not, not only not having like a small party in Brussels, we ended up having like a big one here in London, which was, I mean, <laughs> quite cool. The, 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 the crowdfunding thing is also fitting very well with the way we are working because we like we we are heavy users of social networks and it, on social networks you don't tell the full story you just share bits of your story and when you do this and you do the crowdfunding in parallel you really have the the opportunity to bring people with you on a journey starting with okay i just i would like to make a compilation with those guys until the actual release party and going from all stages, we were sharing uh, unmixed versions of the tracks and, and, and mixes, presenting all the artists, etc. So, yeah, that was that was really cool project once again. And then, okay, you see, we use uh, Oli B's uh, remix, and that was our way to give away those CDs. Um, the project worked very well because we were not only selling CDs, we were offering T-shirts. And that's bring, that brings me to my last point. It's the role of the audience. We never consider our audience as passive listeners. We consider them as potential collaborators. This guy, for instance, uh, went to the Worldwide Festival in the south of France. I never went to that festival. I don't know the guy, but when he came back, he just sent me this picture and told me, yeah, if you want to use my picture wearing the laid-back T-shirt at the festival, please do so. And I'd like to tell you one more thing. Um, when I was at this festival wearing the T-shirt, I had a lot of people coming to me, people I, I didn't know who started talking to me. Oh, you have a laid-back T-shirt. Oh, you're also listening to that radio station, etc." So it was kind of a conversation starter, icebreaker or whatever. And he told me, yeah, I'm... I'm I'm really glad I was wearing this T-shirt because it, it, it changed my experience of the, of the whole festival. So, yeah, I mean, I could go on and on for hours, but I think my, my, my time is, is gone. It's just when people ask me what is laid back, I'm not able to give an elevator speech. Laid back is just my dream. Laid back is just a brand that I created. Uh, you can just flip to the last one just to show a few stuff that we did. But um, it's, it just allows us to, yeah, to do stuff, and I don't want to define it. I want to keep it vague, although people in the marketing or whatever, they always look at me as a, a weirdo because I should be able to pitch my project. I don't want to pitch it. I want to keep it vague because I want to be able to do everything. If tomorrow it's an exhibition, be it an exhibition, a party, a record, a radio show, whatever. Thank you. Mm -hmm.